over the last couple of years, I've released several videos that talk about things like creating support and resistance lines and detecting when the price crosses those so that you can trade a breakout type strategy. Uh, I've talked about consolidating ranges when the price contracts and using that as a range for a breakout strategy. And very recently, I released a video that showed how to set up a timed range to determine the high and low points and a breakout strategy on that. In each of those cases, I get questions from people asking about re-entry. So what I've just been describing are cases where you wait for the price to cross the range barrier and trade when the price crosses it. But a lot of people want to let the price cross the barrier, come back again, and then trade when the price moves out again to avoid those fake outs where the price may go just outside the range, come back and move to the other side. As I often say, the hardest part of writing code like that is determining the rules that you want to apply, exactly what you want to happen. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up my rule set, and that is going to be that once I've established the range, by any means I have, but I'll be using the timed range example for this video. Once you've established the range and you have the high and low points, and let's just assume that we're talking about breaking to the high side because the low side is the opposite, I'm going to wait for the price to close outside that range. So it's going to cross the barrier and actually close above that high level. And then I'm going to wait again for the price to close back under that range level. And then I'm going to trade as soon as the price touches that range again, heading towards the outside. So I'm not going to wait for it to close again on the outside. I'm going to trade as soon as it moves up to that price point. Of course, there are variations on this. You may decide that you want to wait for the price to close outside and then trade as soon as it touches the point coming back in, looking for a bounce as soon as possible. You may decide that you want to wait for that third bar to close outside. You may decide that you want to have these bars consecutive where I'm going to be allowing them to happen at any time. But this is the rule set that I have. And as I say, the hard part is just deciding on your rule set. I will be using the timed breakout strategy that I set up a couple of videos back. So I'm just going to be taking that one example and I'm going to be doing the modification. I'm just going to do it on screen as we watch this. So I haven't thought this through too much already. I'm going to be just making it up as we go. So now I'm here with the MetaTrader 5 editor and what I have done in preparation, I've taken the timed breakout strategy and I've simply renamed the folder as reentrant breakout. I've renamed the files and I've opened them all here in the MetaTrader 5 editor. I will leave a link to the earlier video so that you can find this code, but this is where I'm starting and there have been no changes other than the change the name. And if you have seen the videos, you'll know that what I do typically, I create an MQ5 file, an MQ4 file, and an MQH file, and I put all of the common code in the MQH file. And in the MQ5, I have this include statement, and I've already changed this to include reentrant breakout.mqh, and I have the same thing in the MQ4 file. And then I put code that's specific to MetaTrader 4 or 5 in these MQ5 and MQ4 files. I think for what I'm changing today, I won't need to touch the MQ5 and MQ4 other than where I've already changed this include statement. I think I'll be able to do everything in the reentrant breakout.mqh file. So let's just jump straight in here and see what we might need to do. I don't think I'll need any changes to inputs because I'm not changing the way I detect the range. So this earlier example simply looks for the high and low points within a timed range. So if I go down here, I, I think what I'm going to need to add, I had some global variables here which detected whether I was inside the range or whether the current time was inside that close period. So remember I not only had the start and end times for finding the range high and low, I then had a close time where I would close all trades at that point. So I've set up the global variables already for the inside range and inside close. I think I'm going to add some more here because I want to detect if I've broken outside to the upside or broken high, and I want to detect if I've broken down to the low side. So I think I just need some more booleans here. Yes, I think so. What I want is um, so I want a boolean to detect if I've broken out to the high side.
and then as I said I'm going to be waiting for the price to come back in so I'm going to set up another boolean here to say that I've broken back into the range from the high side I think that will do it so I've got a breakout high break in high and breakout low and break in low in the on tick this should be where I do everything I still have the range high and range low because I'm detecting those in the same way inside close and is inside time. I think at this point I want to reset all of those new booleans to false. I'm probably going to reset that in more than one place but what this is saying is that yes what this statement saying is that I was inside the close period so I haven't updated this variable yet so this is as it came back in here. So I was inside that period between the end time and the close time and now I am not inside that range again so between end minutes and close minutes in fact I might just make this a little easier to understand read a little better so all I've really done I've taken that code here put it outside just to make it easier to read so now outside the close means that I'm not inside the range from the end minutes to the close minutes and I'm saying if inside close and this is where I thought I was and I'm now outside the close then I close all and inside close equals false I'm going to also reset those new boolean values here So that way, once I've reached that close point, I'll simply stop tracking these. I think I'll do the same treatment here to just make this a little easier to understand. Instead of calling this next inside range, yes, I'll change this now out to now outside range and make that negative. So I'm now outside the range if I'm not inside the start and end minutes so if I was inside the range and I am now outside it's a little easier to read now I'm not going to be opening a trade here so what this previously said was once I've moved outside the range I would open a buy stop and a sell stop but I'm not doing that now I need to wait for those re-entries. So I'll just comment these lines out for the time being. And I think I will also reset these values at this point. There. So I've just left the timed range or at least the time has just left that timed range and so I'm getting ready to look for the breakouts and the break-ins and I've changed this variable so I'll just copy that there so my inside range is equal to not outside the range makes sense if I'm not outside the range then I should be inside and I don't think any of this changes this is just detecting the new high and low while I'm inside the range so that takes care of all the existing conditions I now need to add something so that I can monitor to see if I have exited the range sorry I now need to monitor if I've closed outside that range and then again if I've closed inside the range and 
because I'm looking for close of those bars, I think I'm going to use the new bar function because I only want to look at that once for each bar. Uh, now, where do I need to put that? Yeah, I'll put it after this statement. So this is where I'm looking to see if I've gone past the close time and I'll reset everything there. But before I check to see if I've exited the inside range, I'll add that code in here. So what I want to look for is if is new bar. So I'm saying if this is a new bar and I am inside the close time, I will want to know the close price. Now I have that closing price. I want to detect if I have closed outside or inside, but I also want to check to see if I've already closed outside. So I'm going to use the break in values, the break in low and the break in high to tell me if I've actually triggered trades. So I'll do the high first. So if I haven't reached a break in point, then it means I'm still looking for the break out. to say that breakout high is equal to not breakout high and close is greater than range high. Is that right? So if I don't have a break in, I don't, I think I can leave this out. If I have not breakout high, then once I've closed outside the range, this will be set to true. The next time I come in here, instead of saying not break at high, I want to say it's equal to break at high or that makes more sense. So once I have a breakout high, it will remain true. And I'll also set it to true if close is greater than range high. Yeah, sorry about that, that makes more sense. And then if breakout high, So if I've already set breakout high to true, which on this pass shouldn't be, but if it was set in an earlier pass and now it's true and I've closed inside the range, that's where I've had a break in. So that's the important one. And at this point, I've set break in high to true, but that's really just the flag to stop executing this code in future. I can simply open the trade here. Let me go down here. I'll just copy this open trade. So that's for the buy stop. I'll copy that line in there. Range high, range low. Okay. That looks all good. So if I haven't already broken in, and I can't have broken in until I have broken out. So if I haven't broken in, then I'll check to see if I've had a breakout. Once I've had a breakout, if I close back below the range high, then I've had a break in, and then I can set the trade as a buy stop at the range high. And if you remember from last time, this argument is the stop loss point. So I'll be opening the trade at range high, with a stop loss at range low and it will automatically set a take profit one to one. I think that's everything I need. So now I can just duplicate that for the breakout to the low side. And that's just a matter of changing high to low.
I know I could do a global replace on these, but I'm reading it as I go through because there might be other changes I need to make. And here's one. I'm saying that close would be less than range low. And the breakout low. And close is greater than range low. I'll just copy this line again from down here. Okay. Check my notes, see what I've got here. Just check the compile on that, see if I've got any syntax errors. I think there's one more thing I need to do. Uh, if you remember last time, I set this spread point and then I updated the range high when I was entering the trade. I did that to avoid cases where at that very last bar of the timed range, the price is very close to the top or the bottom and you simply can't open the buy stop or the sell stop because the price is too close. So I added spread and an extra 50 points just to make sure that my entry price was far enough away from whatever that closing price was. But now that I'm moving the code out from here and I'm not opening directly as soon as the range ends, it is possible that when I have a break-in, the close price at that break-in will again be very close to this range value. So I actually don't want to update the range high and range low here. I do want to capture these values. I don't need them there, so I'll just copy those place them here. So if it's a new bar and I am inside the close period, so once I get outside that close period, I'm not going to be opening any trades. So if I'm still inside the close period, then I get the closing price for bar number one. I'm calculating the spread or I'm getting this spread, which is an integer and I'm adding 50 points. So this gives me the number of points of the current spread. This gives me the size of a point what I'm going to do then so that's my total gap that I want to set the entry points away from the range high or the range low and so then when I get to this open trade range high is currently exactly the range high and it also means that I'm comparing now to exactly the range high not the range high plus that gap but I do want to open this trade at range high plus gap I'm going to re leave range low as the exit point though. And I think then that means when I open the sell stop, I want to enter that at range low minus gap. So that will avoid me having to set up a sell stop that's too close to the current price. I think that is everything. Let me compile this again, just to make sure I don't have any compile errors. Okay, I don't. Now what I'm going to do is run some tests on this. And I'll stop the video while I run those tests so you don't have to watch me running all of these and I'll come back and let you know if I found any bugs in it and then we'll just do a one-time demonstration okay I'm back and thanks for waiting and yes this is why we run tests I found three errors in this code let's just explain them quickly first the inside close and now outside close there was no point where I was setting inside close to true so I've added this line, inside close equals not, now outside close after this condition. So that was important. I've also changed this line. Previously this said, is new bar, bracket, bracket, and inside close. I've changed that to is new bar true, and I've reversed the order so that this inside close is evaluated first. And if that's false, it won't even try the is new bar. Uh, and the true there, if you've seen the earlier video on how the is new bar function works, the first time it's called inside any on tick, that needs to be set to true. And the third change, range high and range low, I was never resetting these to zero. So I've added that here. Once we reach the end of that close period and we close everything, I'm setting range high to zero and range low to zero. It wasn't a problem 
with the version before I introduced the re-entry code because if I just scroll down you can see I used to set it to zero as soon as I placed these orders but now because I might be placing the buy stop at a different time to the sell stop I can't reset them as soon as I place an order so instead I've put those two lines of code range high and range low equal to zero inside this block which happens when we go past the closing time for each day. I've also made a change and this had nothing to do with bugs this is just to make it easier to see what's happening. This um, show range, range high and range low. This just draws a horizontal line at the range high and the range low and it also draws a vertical line at the end of the timed range. Just makes it a little easier to see in the strategy tester does nothing actually to help with the execution of the expert it's just for visual so now I can actually go back to MetaTrader now I go to the reentrant breakout compile I'll go to MetaTrader 5 and we'll run that demonstration so you can see it happen now I'm running I've set my let me go back up here the start hours to seven zero minutes and the end to ten and zero minutes and then the close time is twenty two and zero minutes I'm running this on GBP USD. So it started at the beginning of the day. I'll just let that run for a moment until it reaches the end of the range. Pause. And this is the end of the range. It's a 30 minute chart. So this little vertical line is at 9.30, which the end of the 9.30 bar on a 30 minute chart is going to be at 10. So it's found the low point here. And if I just hover over that that is the seven o'clock bar so that's where my timed range started the low point was at the 730 bar the lowest of the 730 bar and the high point would have been around here which is the 830 bar so it's drawn the low and the high points for that and here's a vertical line just to show when the range ended I'll let that run again now at this point a bar has closed outside the range so the breakout will have been set to true and now we're just waiting for a break in to happen now we've had a bar that's closed inside the range so the break in has happened as soon as that happened this buy stop was opened there is the take profit for the buy stop and the stop loss is at the other end of the range so you can see that if we'd taken this trade as soon as we crossed the top of the range it didn't reach the take profit and has reversed now we need to see if that trade would have been successful and already I can see that if we had opened the trade here or even here as soon as the price exited the range then we would have reached this stop loss and lost on that trade but because we waited for the re-entry we didn't actually come back out of the range again so we never executed this buy and that will just wait there now until the close time it hasn't opened a sell because again we haven't re-entered the range from the short side At this point you can also see we avoided a loss on the buy by not taking this trade but if we had the logic that simply entered a trade as soon as we crossed the boundary we would have made a profit on the short side but given that we would have lost on the long side that profit on the short side would have only been offsetting the loss we'd already made so we're probably better off not to have taken the trade at all. Now we've reached the closing time for the day and that buy stop has disappeared and now I'll just let it run through and do one more day. So in this case a new range formed the price exited the range and closed outside here continued to go up came back down re-entered here so we placed the buy stop there the price then came back out of the range and hit that buy stop and eventually this has gone on to make a profit so I won't show any more it's pretty much just repeating the same things and although 
this is only shown the long side the code that is in there will also execute trades on the short side if we break out to the short side so that's showing how you can code re-entries to a range uh, this is of course just based on the time range that I had earlier but all that time range is doing is setting a range high and a range low point so if you have them set by some other means then that's fine what I haven't shown is how to deal with something like a trend line that you might draw on screen that is not horizontal so I'll have a follow-up video coming that will show you how to deal with non-horizontal lines which are your breakout and break-in points so until next time thank you for watching